Hey guys, it's Kate, and I hope you're having a wonderful day today. I am back with another watercolor, and we're going to do some abstract painting and blobs and let those colors mix on the page and then do a drawing over it. So I wanted to experiment today with, well, a few things actually. I broke out my Mozart Coma Raby palette, and I wanted to play around with that today, but I have been also experimenting with <laughs> a very basic watercolor paper, and that is... Um, artist loft from Michaels and I don't know if you have Michaels craft stores in your area depending on where you're watching from but um, if you do it might be a good video to watch to see how you might like how the paint performs on that paper normally in my videos I use a cotton paper and my kind of go-to for these is B which is a nice low-cost cotton paper but um, when I first started painting, I used Canson and I used the wood pulp papers. And, you know, for what they are, they're definitely different feeling, a little bit of a different quality. And there's even a whole range of quality, even in cotton paper. But depending on what you're going for, they could work really well for you. And they are a low cost alternative. And I know a lot of people use wood pulp paper. So I kind of picked this up because it was on sale, but it's been a lot of fun to play with. And actually you can even see the pattern on the paper, um, the way the paint kind of sinks into it a little bit. I really like that. And I'm not used to that on the normal papers that I use. So it's been kind of interesting to play with. But I'm going in with some of my favorite colors, which is the turquoise and the greens and earthy tones. And I'm putting in and spreading out blobs on the paper and just letting the colors kind of flow together. I'm working pretty wet and I've got the end of the pad taped down with some washi tape. Now, since the Coma Raby palette doesn't come with its own mixing area, um, actually they have a swatch sheet that comes with the palette that's sort of taped into the lid so you can't use it to put paint in. So I have uh, taken some sauce cups from my kitchen and they have permanently migrated to the craft room for watercolor and they work beautifully. I love using them and they're easy to clean. So pro tip, if you're looking for some mixing wells, you might go the sauce cup route and I like kind of grabbing them and just holding them while I'm painting. It works out really nicely. So after my first layer is done, I want to go back in with a second coat. You can see how the paint kind of lightens up as it dries and some of the areas get that little bit of a bloom from the drying time. Um, in the bottom right hand corner and left hand corner especially you can see those were some of the extra wet parts of the paper where the water dripped a little bit on the first layer and so you can see that sort of texture left behind as it dries if you don't like that that's just something to kind of watch out for if you have water kind of sitting on your paper surface So I'm just being very free with my blobs on the second layer and getting that darker color down there. I re-wet some of the leftover turquoise that was in my sauce cup and I'm adding some more color as I go to really darken things up and add a lot of texture. I'm going to be doing drawing over this and I'm also using my shapes that I create to sort of draw an image from it and turn it into part of a picture. So I'm just putting down lots and lots of different color and texture and blobs and I really love that sort of cloudy look that that you get and seeing all the colors kind of blend together and layer over the the dry areas too. 
And so you get kind of this glazing effect also. And I'm just being very loose with my brush and just letting the color flow where it wants to go. And then I wanted to use more of my metallic colors. So I'm dipping into the metallic red ochre and I haven't really used this color. So I wasn't sure how exactly it would kind of react with the still wet greens and blues, but it ended up working out really beautifully. And um, it just spread in there and adds that little bit of extra shine. And so I'm dropping that into some different areas on the painting and just getting it very wet in the application. And when it dries, um, you'll be able to see a close up. It just has a very nice sparkle. And lastly, I'm adding a little bit more of the sort of golden brown colors back in. I had started out with the yellow, but a lot of that's been kind of covered up with the greens and blues. So I'm adding a little bit of that earthiness back into it in just a few different areas. And then I will let everything dry. So I was sitting and looking while it was drying and picking out some different shapes that I kind of saw pop out at me. And what I really ended up seeing was a tree <laughs> and kind of a, an old, you know, scraggly tree that had lots of limbs and leaves. And so what I wanted to kind of do was a little bit of a reverse coloring and I'm um, using my acrylic paint marker that I got from Hobby Lobby. And I'm going around to where I see the lines kind of naturally popping out at me. And so I'm tracing around those to get my basic tree shape and drew in a little bit of a trunk, but it's very doodly and I really like just the sort of organic feel of it. And it's just that nice exercise in creativity where you're, it's like looking for shapes and clouds that you see going by. It's, it's fun. And so I'm just kind of adding in some extra spots to fill out that tree shape. And I turned in that kind of blob at the bottom into another tree branch, which I like that I did that because I didn't want to have kind of a weird trunk. <laughs> so I'm filling in the trunk area now with my paint marker, but I'm making it really textured, almost like bark. And you can see the background paint coming through too in the color. And then I'm going to go through with my marker and put in some leaves. So it's going to be very a very abstracted tree, but I'm following the natural path of the branches as they would have been and making all of the leaves kind of branch out from the center. And so those are going to be where you can see through on the paint. And then I'm gonna color in around all those leaves. And so you'll end up getting this really uh, multicolored, multi-toned leaf pattern, which I just really, really loved when it came out and uh, when I finished in all the colors. and where I had put the lines in the branches, it had like partial leaves and stuff, which I thought added some extra texture too. So I was glad that I did that. And it really helps knock back some of that busyness of the background too. You have that black contrast and it just makes everything pop out. So then I grabbed my Jelly Roll pen and I'm going over to add a few little highlights in some areas. So I'm adding some extra marks down in the trunk and then some little white leaves just kind of scattered around in some random places in the black paint marker. 
and where I thought that it could use a little bit of a detail to just fill out the, tr the leaves a little bit. And I really loved how that metallic red ochre dried and I'll be using a little bit more of that also. And then once I get everything on the paper, I will, as always, or as usual, <laughs> give you a close up in the camera. I love doing these paintings, they're so zen. So I'm getting a nice good brush load of that metallic paint and giving it some splashes to add kind of this nice almost coppery look and it really goes well with the color that's on there and then taking off the tape and let you see the finished result i hope you try something like this it's so much fun to do and you don't need a lot of supplies really just a marker and whatever watercolors you have on hand but Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep creating.